There are loads of occasions when we wish time would move faster, such as when we're waiting for a bus or when Mike starts talking about cars. Sadly, in the real world, the only time travel we're allowed to do is forward at a rate of one hour per hour. Having said that, seeing what video game characters have to go through to get time to pass more quickly, perhaps we're better off. Consider these ways to fast-forward time in games that we don't recommend trying in real life. Metal Gear Solid V's Venom Snake is exactly the kind of guy who would spend hours hiding in a bush, weeing in a bottle, just waiting for the perfect moment to infiltrate an enemy stronghold. Clearly recognising how tedious this would be, Snake is kitted out with the Phantom Cigar, a device that accelerates time and makes a lady say whoa a lot. Is she inside the cigar? There is at least a bit of logical thinking behind the Phantom Cigar. It contains wormwood, which Metal Gear Solid V reckons can have hallucinatory and anaesthetic effects at high doses. Unfortunately, modern medicine reckons it actually causes convulsions and kidney failure at high doses. Which seems a steep price to pay when you could just spend eight hours having thumb wars with your own robot arm. Now I know what you're thinking, and yes, there is something else that you could put in that cigar to help time fly by, but it is still illegal in 22 states. Naughty. So the notice about Jenny of the Woods, you posted it, right? Oh, aye, twas me. You do it. You's a witcher, is you not? Must be hard work being a witcher, witching all over the place. Whatever witching is, it's a full-time job. The world of The Witcher 3 has a laundry list of gross monsters that need putting out of their misery, and Geralt seems to be the only one trying to solve the problem. The complicating factor is that some monsters that he needs to kill only come out at certain times, like Night Wraiths. The clue is kind of in the name. So she appeared to you just after Twilight? Important clue, thanks. You take care now. So that's why they call it the witching hour. Right, got it. But that's not great for a witcher who isn't paid by the hour. So rather than standing around in a haunted forest waiting on the schedule of some ghostly apparition, Geralt can meditate to pass the time, waking up just in time to kick some spectral rump. Man, if Jenny of the Woods had turned up just five minutes early, Geralt would have been in real trouble. Meditation is actually useful outside of just eating up the hours. On low and normal difficulty levels, it's restorative to Geralt's health, sort of in the same way as a decent night's sleep might be in other games. He's definitely not sleeping. He's meditating. Feel free to use that one next time you doze off in history class. Tell me a joke. Now, I don't know about you, but I love a good sit down. I'm doing it right now. It is great, you guys. Are you gonna do the rest of the video? In a minute. Someone who loves sitting down even more than me, however, is the sole survivor of Vault 111 from Fallout 4. With Fallout 4, Bethesda updated the series waiting system so that instead of being able to wait wherever you wanted, you now had to sit down if you wanted to advance the clock to a particular time. What this means in practice is your sole survivor finding a nice chair, getting comfortable, and then sitting, staring straight ahead, unblinking for any period of time up to 24 hours. You probably don't need me to tell you that this is a bad idea, what with the lack of food and drink, background radiation, pressure sores from sitting in one place for too long, oh and the fact it's one of the most unnerving and creepy things you can possibly do. And that's true even in a world where super mutants keep bits of people in string bags. At least spray yourself gold and put a hat down, you might be able to make some caps as a living statue. Your lies fall on deaf ears, deceiver. We know you are the false Dragonborn. You shall not stand in the way of the true Dragonborn's return. He comes soon, and we shall offer him your heart. Like the earlier Fallout game, Skyrim is much more relaxed about exactly when and where you can wait. Presumably thanks to your strong Dragonborn quads, you can stand bolt upright from Morndas to Freydas without needing to sit down, sleep, or bathe, presumably. It was a different time. It's still not a real historical period! As long as there aren't any enemies nearby, Skyrim reckons you're just fine waiting around, even if you're on top of a mountain, in a blizzard, in your underwear. You don't hear the bard singing about that in The Dragonborn Comes. At the throat of the world where the greybeards do chance, there the dragonborn stands, clad just in his pants. Oh, okay. 
What is going on, Roman? How about we go bowling? Pico, this is a great American activity. We bowl together and you pick me up in next hour. I am coming to get you, Roman. GTA 4 represented a huge leap forward for the Grand Theft Auto series after the PS2 era games. What that means, though, is that the time of day became more realistic, too. In-game days lasted twice as long, and you had to contend with real-life issues like increased traffic during rush hour. Serves you right for trying to drive in Manhattan. I mean... Algonquin. Even worse, characters had realistic routines, meaning they weren't always available to do cool missions with us at 4am on Tuesday morning. Nico, you woke me. I took so much top last night, I turned into a troll. Try me at four. You're all criminals. You should be setting your own hours. You could advance time the usual way by sleeping, but it only advances time in six hour chunks, which is not useful if your next appointment is in five hours and 58 minutes. But those in the know are aware that if you take your car in for a quick respray, it'll advance time by only three hours, leaving you two hours and 58 minutes to cause Roman some kind of horrible injury. Damn you fool, stay out of the way. Jerk off! Three hours is pretty quick for a full respray though. My local body shop quoted me a week. Cowboys. Agent Morgan, look at what time it is. The art gallery is closed by now. Our investigation has ended for today. Oh, come on, George. I'm sure there are plenty of other leads to follow. No, I disagree. It's your methods that have caused this problem. And it's your fault that we didn't make any progress today. Deadly premonition is what you would get if someone shook you awake in the middle of the night, screamed at you to describe Twin Peaks, and then made a game based on your terrified ramblings. Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In. The coffee. Sure. The game has its own in-game clock, and main character Francis York Morgan can sleep to pass 3, 6, 9, or 12 hours at a time, or, more usually in our experience, run out of gas miles away from the nearest town and spend that amount of time walking back to civilization. Zack, we'll finish our chat later. Let's take a walk around here. If you want to pass a specific amount of time, however, you can smoke cigarettes and be treated to a scene where Francis stands in front of a grandfather clock, its hands spinning impossibly fast, while a mounted deer head on the wall headbangs to music only it can hear. And you were there. And you were there. Now, obviously smoking, terrible for you, but apparently sanctioned by the police force themselves if Morgan's brand of choice is anything to go by. Crazy. Just crazy. Makes about as much sense as anything else in Deadly Premonition. Here you go. The usual. One turkey, strawberry jam, and cereal sandwich. Sounds like the sinner's sandwich. Self-inflicted punishment to atone for past sins. He's setting an example. <laughs> There are few things more boring than travelling through space with nothing to do. Just ask the Voyager 1 Pro. Poor little guy. These days, spaceflight sim Elite Dangerous uses super crews to zip you around solar systems in seconds, but back in 1993, Frontier Elite 2 had a far more low-tech solution to match its low-tech graphics. I've seen more polygons in one of Marcus Phoenix's nostril hairs. In Frontier, all spaceships are fitted with Star Dreamer Time Control, which uses a COD Science combination of ultrasonic waves and something called a Zillman field to put you in a state of semi-hypnosis. This way you can just sit and watch the range indicator tick down the astronomical units as you approach your targets. Just don't accidentally lean on the button without autopilot engaged, or you might end up slamming into a planet. So nice of Konami to sponsor my gravestone? In the year 3200, marketing has clearly got really weird. The other problem with Star Dreamer Time Control is that it's just hypnosis. There's nothing in there about it preventing you from aging, meaning one day you're going to arrive at Barnard's Star and discover that your face is just one giant wrinkle. Then someone you meet is going to mistake you for an undiscovered alien race, and then you'll have to play along, and it's just going to get really awkward. Thanks for watching this video. Click on one of these two videos underneath for more stuff like this. And if you'll excuse me, I'm going to wait until next week's video.